Hello everybody, Josh12 back here again with another video and I'm here with another Flash review. Yes, I'm here to give you my fish review for The Flash Season 2, Episode 15, titled King Shark. Now, of course, if you haven't seen this episode, please go check it out because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said and done, let's get into the newest episode of CW's The Flash. Now, the, the past couple of episodes have been really on point. They've been awesome. I mean, everything that's been dealt with in the Earth 2 storyline was pretty badass, I have to admit. I mean, like, it was really cool to see Earth 2, it was cool to see each character's double ganger, so on and so forth. And now that we're back, we have to deal with the consequences of going to Earth 2. You know, Barry's dealing with his own stuff, Cisco's dealing with his own stuff, Caitlin's dealing with the unfortunate, spoilers, loss of Jay Garrick. And now that the breaches, or the doors, if you will, to Earth 2 have been closed for good, there's not really much these characters can do, so it's pretty much the majority of this episode dealing with that on top of, you know, you know, obviously, hence the title, King Shark, which is the big bad of this episode. And for me personally, before getting into the episode, I knew what I was, you know, really in, on board for. I was on board for a cheesy, super fun, stupid episode, and I got it. I mean, like, this is the episode only the sci-fi channel could pull off and I'm pretty sure after seeing it they would be proud of what the CW was able to achieve in this episode because I mean as stupid as it is and as as crazy of a character King Shark is it's pretty badass that we got to see an entire episode dedicated to CGI characters because the Flash does deal with effects and visuals more than Arrow and you know now that we have Legends that kind of balances out but at the same time I mean, this episode, if there's one thing to be commended for, it has to be its visuals. King Shark kills it. He looks so awesome. I mean, if you were kind of disappointed by Gorilla, Gorilla Grodd uh, in the past ventures we had with him in Season 1 and, see, and this season alone, then you're probably going to get your money's worth with King Shark. He looks really badass. They definitely, CW definitely put in the money to make sure King Shark looks badass, and it's really cool to see him go to work. And plus, we get Diggle and Lila coming over, crossing over, of course, with the whole Argus stuff. I find it kind of funny that out of probably the hundreds of thousands of, I guess, members of Argus, Lila would become the head of it? I don't know. I, I mean, granted, Amanda Waller is gone now from the show uh, until they freaking bring her back because of some comic book mumbo-jumbo. But as of right now, she's gone, so Lila's second in command? Eh, whatever. But as long as we get some more comedic moments with them and, the, and Team Flash, I'm all up for it. Because when it comes to the crossovers, they can become a little too cheesy and corny. But Diggle, as corny as he could be, it was really cool to see him on Team Flash's side. I'm just saying, it was just every single moment he sees Barry do his thing and seeing him react to it is freaking, it, it's breathtakingly hilarious and I love that. And of course, on top of all these plot lines, we also got the subplot of Barry versus Wally. And for me, as a comic book fan, it feels kind of nice to have those kind of moments because we already know that Wally inevitably becomes the Flash. He is the Flash. Uh, after Barry takes the bullet, if you will, and it's kind of cool to see them kind of cross paths because they really haven't had uh, a POV episode together, and this was kind of like the closest to that, so it was kind of cool to see that, but um, I will admit that it does get a little too like, why are these two characters bitching at each other? Like, at first I get it because it's like, at first they're going to be kind of like enemies, then they're going to be frenemies, then they're going to be friends, and then like, Barry will probably end up possibly losing at some point in this storyline slash series and then Wally becomes the new Flash which could end up happening like it did in the comic book so it's just gonna see it's just gonna be very fun and hopefully entertaining to see their storyline and their friendship develop when this season's over and how it transitions to the future seasons but as of right now I'm kind of 50 50 on their thing I feel like it was cool to see them go back and forth knowing their future together in, in the comic books, but as is, it's like, why are these two characters bitching at each other? Like, shouldn't they be best buddies? Shouldn't they? That's just me. But on, on top of that, it, this episode was just a solid, fun, entertaining episode. Another thing that kind of, if I have to nitpick, kind of similar to the Barry Wally stuff, has to be Barry as a character. I mean, Barry, Gr let's put it out there, Grant Gustin's amazing. He's amazing. He's phenomenal as Barry Allen, and he's probably the main reason as to why everyone under the sun wants the TV and movie universes to be connected over at DC. It's never going to happen, but 
you know, it's because of Grant Gustin's popularity and his, you know, friendship with the fan base that he really, that people just love this idea. And I like Grant Gustin too. He's a pretty good, you know, new up and coming actor. And I feel like if he plays his cards right, not only with the DC and comic book community, he can also really flourish as an actor and other dramatic stuff. But sometimes his acting could be a little too melodramatic and a little overly dramatic. I think those are like the two biggest things I can take from his performance. It's good, but it's like, look, like Harrison Wells came up and said it to you. You need to like bury the information you have for these people you love deep down inside of you. They're not your people. Now that Earth 2 is gone from our mythos, let it go. And and that's pretty much the, the problem that Barry's dealing with in this episode. That Cisco too, but it's more comedic. On Barry, it's more dramatic. And it's just like, like I get it, Grant Gustin. You're a good actor. Can you stop rubbing it in everybody's fucking face? We get it. You're sad about what happened, but I'm fucking, I don't care that much because they're not your people. And I get it. And, and I would feel 100% on his side performance wise if this was a, was a thing that he was dealing with when it pertained towards mother but he was dealing with Joe and Iris and their whole you know storyline that's kind of just ending in earth 2 and it's just like i get it but it's just like like tone it you're like at 11 perform, performance wise you need to bring it back by at least like a 7 or 8 and that's like the best way i can put it Grant Gus and you're awesome but you 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 honed it up to a little you put it too high. You, you put a, a, a level of your acting dramatically a little too high, and I'm like, I'm I'm okay with it for now, but I'm just saying, when when it comes to these dramatics, tone it back a little bit. You're on TV. You're not doing this in the movie. Tone it back a little bit, but that's the, that's the most nitpicky thing I can say. Overall, this episode was fun, entertaining. The visual was great. The, the way they presented King Shark and not to mention Barry doing his speed thing was really kick-ass in this, in this episode alone. And along with the previous episodes, we've been getting some, you know, wonderful visuals and effects from The Flash, CW's The Flash, so that's really the best thing. Dramatic-wise, it was a little too much CW cheese for me. Uh, Barry versus Wally, I wasn't big on. Cisco and Caitlyn's little back and forth and like, will Caitlyn become Killer Frost? I think that was hilarious and fun the way they did it. Uh, once again... Same thing kind of goes with Danielle, who plays K Caitlyn. I feel like she also kind of got a little too melodramatic. I mean, like, I get it. She was having feelings for Jay, but I don't know. She, I, I guess when it comes to the character of Caitlyn Snow and being in the fucking CW DC universe, she's going to have to learn one of two things. Either A, she's going to have to become a villain, or B, she needs to learn the fact that she just can't keep a guy. She just, I'm sorry, I know that sounds kind of like a douchebag way to say it, but it's just true. Caitlyn can't keep a guy. Robbie died like three times, chronologically, I think so. Yeah, he died like three times, first in season one, second in the beginning of season two, and of course now in Earth two, and you know, now Jay's gone. And it's just fucking, like, you You gotta get used to it at this point in time. Boyfriends of yours die, they just do. But at the end of the day, going down to my final verdict for this episode, it has to go down to a solid 8 out of 10. It was a good, fun, entertaining, good, it was just a great episode. If, it, if I was basing it on visuals alone, it would be a solid 10 or a 9 at best. But because I brought it down to an 8 is mostly because the CW cheesiness, between certain characters got a little too much for me and plus uh, the melodramatics between Caitlyn's character and Barry's character especially that whole like over-the-top ambiguous ending uh, with Barry's speech was just a little too like oh god like can we hurry this up dude like stop with the melodramatics so that's why I pretty much put it down to an 8 but it was still a good episode and plus we got our official reveal of Zoom we know who is behind the mask and I, I will spoil it right now, but I will have to say before I spoil it, it's a little lackluster, and here's why. Jay Garrick is dead, and it is revealed that Zoom is actually Jay Garrick, and it's just like, really? Like, I, I don't know, it's just, I didn't, I'm not feeling it. I don't really, I feel like a better choice for the character of Zoom would have been an all uh, original actor playing the character of Hunter Zolomon, which I'm guessing what this Jay Garrick character is going to be. Two, 
It, Barry from an alternate universe, which would have been really cool. Barry versus Barry. That would have been awesome. And then on top of that, possibly Barry's father, you know, I mean, like that's a character we have not really seen that much in this season. So maybe he could have been like an alternate version of Barry's father. That would have been really freaking crazy. You could have some like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker type shit going down. But, you know, they took, I guess, the easy route, if that makes any sense. And I don't really, I don't really care. I mean, like, I wish they could have done something a little bit more original, something a little more crazy, instead of just having, oh, Jay, get on, another version of Jay is Zoom, whoa, you know, like, it did the last season with Harrison Wells, now you're doing it with Jay, like, what's, like, is next season the big bad's gonna be in another alternate version of fucking the good guy, like, come on, CW, be a little bit more original with the way you do your villains, I liked your, I like your show, I like your shows, but, like, these fucking villain reveals are not that great, I mean, like, you, you, you killed it with the first season, now doing it the same exact, and I'm pretty sure the dude in the freaking Iron Helmet is Jay Garrick too. Like, don't I freaking doubt it's someone else. I'm pretty sure it's another alternate version of Jay, or maybe it isn't. I don't know. I mean, like, who cares at this point in time? I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much just like, ugh, when it comes to Zoom now. Now that I know it's Jay, it's like, I wish they could have saved that. Or at least change it to a different person. That's just me. But let me know what you personally think. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I have to say about The Flash, this current episode of The Flash. And my final verdict stands. It's a solid 8 out of 10. Let me know what you personally think in the comments section below. And also, this is going to be the last episode of The Flash up until March 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, unfortunately, Arrow will also be taking a break uh, and won't be returning until, Arrow, uh, until March 23rd, which is very interesting. It's kind of sad that we're going to have to wait that long, but keep in mind that week is actually – it comes with some purpose because that's the week that Batman Superman Dawn of Justice comes out. So it's going to be pretty much DC week on you know March – starting with March 22nd. We got The Flash. Arrow, then possibly Legends of Tomorrow, you know, and of course, Bounty Superman Dawn of Justice come out, comes out the following weekend, so, crazy shit will be going down in March, and I guess I'll just wait until then to see what happens with this storyline going forward, and how Barry plans on taking down Zoom once and for all, but with that being said and done, comment below, let me know what you personally think, shameless plug time, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, add Josh12, subscribe to my channel, if you haven't done so already, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and it's been Josh12.